Welcome to Vintage Helena, a series of profiles of individuals who have made many good things happen in our community and the state of Montana. This is a profile of Nancy Nicholson. She's been deeply involved in education and helping folks throughout our community and in fact the state of Montana. We're here at Exploration Works, which she and her husband Alan had a whole lot to do with opening 10 years ago. I know you're gonna find the profile of Nancy Nicholson very interesting. I was born and grew up in Billings, Montana, and went to school through high school there, graduating from Billings Senior, and then I went to MSU in Bozeman, and graduated from um, MSU with a bachelor's in sociology, and I later went on to um, MSU Billings and received a master's in personnel and guidance. Well, I guess I've had an interest in helping uh, make a difference, to help people improve their lives in one way or another. Uh, when I was growing up, something that I did, I started working when I was in the seventh grade, and I worked all the way through college for the Billings uh, Recreation Department. So I taught children during the summers and after school. Uh, my, my first summer, I earned a total of $50. <laughs> for the summer. For the summer, oh. working part time, About but cents an hour or something. but it was great fun. Then I worked outdoors. I taught um, twirling, tumbling, mm -hmm. dance, put together shows. But it was fun to see the little kids and to s help them grow and learn, you know, new talents. So I did that, and that sort of has continued. I just like working with uh, people one on one. Well, growing up in Billings and during that time, I had a strong feeling that I just wanted to be able to pursue my own goals and things were much more limited for girls at that point in time. I mean, I laugh about it now, but in junior high, what they used to call, now they call middle school, um, girls were only allowed to play basketball on half court. They thought that's all that we could handle. And I, I was always quite athletic, but there were just not avenues to participate at that time. And I think that's why I focused more on dance and twirling and things like that. Um, that was you know, a way that I could um, sort of pursue that. But um, I just wanted more opportunities and I wasn't clear how I would direct my energies. But I know as a single parent, um, my son would surprise me sometimes by picking up on attitudes. Um, this came up the other day that um, I used to play tennis and I was playing tennis out at the Yellowstone Country Club and my son asked me if I um, belonged out there and I said, no, women can't belong. Mm. He was outraged mm. and I was surprised at his reaction, but you know, that has since changed, but just, you know, there were a lot of roadblocks. So um, when I went into the brokerage business, I felt like the roadblocks were not there. I could build my own business, I could achieve my own potential if I was a hard worker and smart about it, and I didn't have to rely on other people setting my salary level or determining what I did or didn't do. Initially, I went to work for the state and I was a voc vocational counselor with the CETA training program. So I was working with people who were low income, who were you know, getting additional education or getting training so they could improve their lives. And I was a single parent at the time, and I decided that I really wanted to do something that would give me more potential for earning, um, give me more flexibility with my young son. And so I made the career change um, when I was in my early 30s. Um, I had met a woman in graduate school who had gone into the brokerage business, and she encouraged me, and I went to work for Dean Witter in Billings. And what I found is that the, um, the counseling skills directly transferred over from vocational counseling to financial planning and counseling people about their investments. At a young son, I always wanted him to participate in activities. And so he was on a t-ball team and I got a phone call asking me if I would be a coach. And I said, well, I will help coach. And so there were three mothers, um, and we all co-coached, 
And one of the other coaches was Alan's sister, mm. and he came to watch his niece and nephew play t-ball, mm. and that's how we met. And so a year later, we decided to get married, and that's when I moved to Helena and started working for D.A. Davidson. That was 1985. Yeah, that's I, well, I worked total in the brokerage business for 26 years. 23 of those were with D.A. Davidson, which, and I feel, um, I had a wonderful experience there. I mean, a good company, very supportive. Um, you know, I was one of the few women in the brokerage business at that time. Um, but as the company changed and grew more supportive, I mean, when, I, when Alan and I decided to have our youngest daughter, Molly, uh, 23 years ago, then um, I was able to take time off to be with her um, after her birth, and then I started working from home for the first year, and just had some nice flexibility that, um, because I had a track record, and I was still producing, um, and, and it was a wonderful experience. I, I will say I was the first woman to um, reach the Chairman's Council in DA Davidson, so I felt like there was some respect, you know, from the rest of the company as well. Between Alan and I, we have five children. Um, so yours, mine, and ours. And um, as they were growing up, and I had a full-time career, I didn't have as much time to devote to outside interests. Um, I was um, president of the Helena Montessori Parents Organization, and then I was on the Carroll College Board. But I became more involved with boards um, and charities after I retired. I've been retired 10 years now. And when I retired, I sort of jumped in. Um, I got very involved with the ACLU of Montana and was president of their board for a couple of years. I was also on the board of the Helena Education Foundation. I'm still on the board of the Montana History Foundation. And then I've also been a long-term board member for Growing Friends of Helena that um, does tree planting and improvements to public landscaping. In fact, it's kind of a joke in our family that we'll go places and I'll look at a street or a building and I'll say, you know what this really needs? And all the kids all groan and say, oh, mom, trees. Yes, <laughs> every time. Some family pictures. We haven't had one taken for a while. But um, yeah, that's probably the last one. That was even before grandchildren. Um, and that included my mom in the picture, and then Molly was probably about 10 or so there. So, yeah, everybody. And, and this is when Molly was just a baby, so that would have been in 94. And then this was the year after Alan and I were married with our oldest four. This is our son Paul and his wife Heather, our daughter Kristen, our exchange student Nicholas, exchange student Ingrid, our son Chris, our son Aaron and his wife Yunjong, our daughter Molly, and our exchange student Inez Lovely. are our three grandchildren, and they are now um, 12, oh. 10, and 4. Cool. <laughs> so these pictures are from a while back, but um, Craig and Shelby live in Helena, and Malene lives in Paris. I think public education is one of the cornerstones of our country and our society, and it's a wonderful way that people can start to realize um, their potential. And so anything we can do to keep improving our public education, we will all benefit because as we grow older, we're gonna depend more and more on the younger generations coming up. Um, but we've always been strong believers in education. We were actively involved with our older children, helping all of them as they pursued their educations. And in fact, we currently have a daughter in a Master's of Nursing program and another one that's gonna be applying to graduate school. Um, so we're, we're not done yet. Um, <laughs> no, um, I do go in and volunteer in my granddaughter's classroom, um, and I do, I've done that over the last couple of years. 
Um, I'm still a strong believer of, in Montessori education and would love to see that expanded in the Helena community. Um, children really benefit from that. So we just do what we can. Um, we fund some single parent scholarships um, at, at several colleges in the state. And so we're trying to make a difference where we can. We all remember when this was a sort of a landfill. That's a polite way of saying. A, wa a wasteland. A wasteland <laughs> fill. Yes. Not a nice place. I know. Um, it was that way when I moved to Helena. And then Alan had this dream to make it something special that would be long lasting for the Helena community. And little by little, it's come together. It's still not completed. It's a work in progress. But Exploration Works is just a jewel, right? It's a jewel. As part of it. Yeah, yeah? it's a jewel. Yeah. yeah. Many years ago, Suzanne Wilcox approached Alan and I about putting together a science and technology center, a children's museum, what is what she called it in those days, but doing a community project that would really draw the community together and provide education. And so she was sort of the, the impetus for us starting to look at it. And Alan was developing the Great Northern and decided at that point to donate the land and to help with the development of Exploration Works. And so it's grown, it's now 10 years old. It's amazing. I know, and it's great fun to see children and adults come here for the, the variety of exhibits. Um, I was just mentioning we were just at an 80th birthday party here the other night. So it's used for a lot of different events. Exploration Works is for children of all ages, including us, us big kids. Right. Um, but, you know, science and technology is changing so rapidly, and this just gives a special extra emphasis on that. And, um, for instance, the robotics classes that are offered at Exploration Works. I know our grandson has taken a number of those. And um, I'm a member of uh, the Helena Rotary, and we fund, you know, additional um, robotics um, the classes and some of the equipment. With Dr. Liz. Yeah, yes. <laughs> and just, you know, you try and make a difference in all sorts of ways. Yeah. But we were very glad to see Exploration Works come together, and I think it's been a big benefit to our community. Children start realizing that they can do things, that they can explore and learn, and that they're not limited. And Ideally, we'd like everyone to have that feeling inside themselves so that then they can pursue and take charge of their life as they grow. Well, Alan had long loved carousels, and so he had it in mind that he wanted to build one. But one of my favorite memories, because Molly was very little at the time, I think she was in first or second grade when the carousel opened, and so we arranged for a field trip for her class and um, they went down to the carousel and they were the first ones that got to ride it before it was publicly open. Mm -hmm. But what I remember is, you know, they were still sweeping up the floors, trying to get ready for the opening. Um, construction people were all around. And as all of these kids ran and got on the carousel and it started going around, all of the workmen that had been working on the building and putting the carousel together, stood around the carousel and watched these kids and all of them were smiling. Just these big smiles on their face and it was so touching. It was really fun. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah. yeah I feel like in this time period, I'm more of a political activist than I've ever been before. Is that right? I mean, I started doing some of that through the ACLU, mm -hmm. but I want to continue that. And in my own small way, whether it's a letter, a phone call, trying to give some pushback and make some difference. It does. And at least I'll feel satisfied that I've had my say. Uh -huh. Whether it makes a difference or not, you have to stand up for what you feel is right. Yeah. You know, I, I don't like this disparity that we see in our um, society and in our country right now. I would like everybody to have a better uh, quality of life, um, better income, better opportunities, and we all benefit. And so, um, you know, I, I did not grow up wealthy, um, but I never thought that I was poor. 
Um, you know, I just had what I had and my parents made sure that I had opportunities and things that I needed and I just went along. But I realized there were doors open for me and people that helped me along the way and I want to do the same thing for other people. I think, that's what I think if our community as a whole just paid attention, that if we took an interest in people that we're working with, if we took an interest in children that we see so that we feel some responsibility um, for them, whether it's reinforcing positive behavior, limiting negative behavior, but feeling like um, we're involved. Um, so I think that, that Helena does a lot of that, but I feel like if we all felt more of a responsibility for everyone else here, it would show in how we work together. Thank you for watching Vintage Helena. We hope you enjoyed this segment. If you'd like to suggest someone to be profiled by Vintage Helena, please contact us at HCTV. You can also contact us at Helena Civic Television if you'd like to make a donation to the Vintage Helena program.